Southern Nazarene, how are you this morning? Is anyone else wet? I find it no accident that I'm going to be talking about storms this morning. So I gave God a call and he brought the environment. I am so excited to be with you for these next three days. And Colossians 1.15 says this, the Son, that's Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So if we want to know what God is like, we need to look at Jesus. And so that's what we're going to do over the next three days. We're going to look at three different stories from Jesus' life that I feel will help us when God is a mystery to us. And I don't know about you, but God is no less a mystery to me today than he was when I first became a Christian. There are things about God that are mysterious because of what we go through in our lives. Storms, that's what we're going to look at today, a story of Jesus in the storm. Storms can happen outside of us, that's the little storm we're in today, and I can tell you that in Santa Barbara, where I'm from five years ago, there was a major storm that happened after a fire, so all of the rubble on the hillside came down and created a, an, an Indiana Jones mudslide, basically, and 26 people were killed, homes were destroyed. I was actually separated from my family for a couple of days because of the mud that was between us. It was unbelievable. I don't know if you've ever been in a bad storm. But storms don't just happen outside of us. They can also happen inside of us. And nobody else sees when we're in that kind of storm. And I would venture to say that maybe some of you came in here today with a storm going on in your life. When I was your age, I went through a storm of my parents getting divorced. And that was bad enough, but five years later, my dad actually met and married someone who is three years older than me. That was not what I had planned for my life. I don't know if you're living the plan that you thought you would live, but let me just tell you, as you get older, it gets more different from the plan you thought you'd live. But God has a plan in the storms. The next storm happened when I was single for a long, long time. Now, I wasn't the ring by spring gal. I know that's kind of a thing. I'm not sure if it's still a thing, but it used to be. But I thought about 25 was when I'd like to get married, maybe 26. And when that came and went and I hit 30, I began to pray a little louder. God, are you hearing me? And then when I hit 40, I began to suspect that God was deaf. I don't know if you have ever suspected that with a prayer, but I've been praying a long time. And so when I got engaged at 42, you guys, the hallelujah chorus broke out in my household. I'm not kidding. I mean, my dad was like on his knees saying, thank you, Jesus. And he doesn't even pray like that. And I had two bridal showers so fast, got the wedding dress. I mean, I was a professional bridesmaid at this point, so it was so exciting for me to get that wedding dress. And just a couple of months short of my wedding, my fiancé, who was a Marine reservist, got deployed. He was going to be gone nine months, and I figured, well, I've waited this long. I guess I can wait just a little bit longer. And in the course of his deployment, his ex-wife, who had left him, began to have second thoughts and was writing him, unbeknownst to me. And so when he came home, we had been engaged for a year and a half. We actually broke up, and he remarried his ex-wife, which is a great story when you're not the girl engaged to the guy. And I can tell you that I had some well-meaning Christians say, well, isn't it great that God used you to bring them back together? And I'm like, you know what? It's fabulous, and I hope you have the same opportunity someday. <laughs> you know, sometimes storms hit, and in a very real way when that happened, even though it was a great story. I told you guys, my parents got divorced. When two people can find their way back together together, it's a God thing, but I couldn't imagine that God thought I was strong enough 
to be the one at that age to make this happen. What about me, God? I don't know if you've ever felt that way. Storms can happen in our life. And so this story that's found in Matthew 8, and it's found in a couple of the other Gospels, is the story of Jesus and the disciples, and it's a storm, and they go out in the boat. And that is when, actually the storm didn't start till they got out in the boat, and when this furious squall, I mean, it was just this incredible storm happened, the disciples were terrified, they're bailing water out, and they look over to see where Jesus is, and he's asleep. So two things we observe. First of all, Jesus is not in the storm. He's in the boat. God is not in the storm. He's with you in the storm. That's the good news. But the second part of this story is that Jesus is asleep. How many of you have ever felt like God was asleep in your life? Am I the only one? Sometimes when we're praying and asking and seeking and wondering We don't hear the answer, and we're like, God. So Jesus being asleep says one of two things. The first is he doesn't care, and the second is he's in control. Here's what happens to us in storms. We end up bailing in the middle. So many people give up on God because of what's going on in their life. I mean, you just have to look at the world right now and say, how can there be a God with all of this stuff going on? And what happens is we bail before the story's over. I wrote a book called Faith, Doubt, and God's Mysterious Timing because what I've learned about God's timing is that it's not our timing. And it's usually a lot longer than ours. In fact, I have one joke I tell. It's, it's uh, not that great, but it's a joke about timing. A man was trying to outsmart God. And he said, God, is it true that for you, a thousand years is like a second? And God said, yeah, that's true. He said, well, then does it follow that a thousand dollars is like a penny? And God said, yeah, I guess so. And he goes, well, then God, can I have a penny? And God said, sure, just a second. We can't really outsmart God. Some of you aren't asleep, so you're going to have to ask your neighbor about that one. But we can't really outsmart God when it comes to God's timing. But what we know is that God's timing is longer than ours. And sometimes we bail in the middle of the storm. The disciples could have said, Jesus is asleep. Nobody's going to help us. I'm out. I'm out. But you got to stay in the boat with God to see what he's going to do because you're going to learn things about God in the storm that you wouldn't learn elsewise. This is a quote from my book. We can't see God's power over a storm unless we're in the storm when it takes place. I want to tell you guys, in the middle of my storm, I was speaking, and I used to do a lot of speaking at at youth conferences and youth worker conferences, and when my engagement broke up, I had a speaking engagement just several days later. And I can remember having it out with God. What, what am I going to say? Is this what it's come to? Should I lie? I mean, if I tell my story, people are going to walk away from you. And I could hear, I don't know if it was here, but I just felt the presence of God say, don't you worry about me, little girl. You think I don't know what's going on in your life? Do you trust me? in the storm, you tell your story. And so I did, right in the middle, in the middle of my story. And I, I remember I, did, I said, this is what's just happened in my life. And, you know, and I was engaged for a year and a half, and now I've got this wedding dress and shower gifts, and I'm not getting married. And I looked up, and everyone was like, oh, no. But then I said, and I know this was the Holy Spirit, I said, but God's not through with my story. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know if I'll ever get married, but I know one thing. I got up this morning and I'm still breathing, so God's not through with my story. And you know what? Some of you need to hear that today. You walked in here in the middle of a storm and you feel like it's over. It's over. Something just ended or or you experienced a little death in your life, whatever it is that you're going through, you feel like it's over and you're only in the middle of your story. And I know that because you got up. 
and you're awake, at least most of you. So you came here today, and that's what happens to us. We kind of get up the next day after we feel like life is over, but then we get up. So apparently life isn't over. We have to stay with God in the storm, and sometimes it takes a long time. So what happened? I'm in my apartment, and uh, back in the apartment that I was leaving to get married, and we had furniture in the home, and I was waiting for him to come home, and it was just a disastrous time in my life. And four months later, I got a call from a pastor in Santa Barbara who was an old friend. He said, Lori Polich, that was my maiden name, Lori Polich, I heard you got married. I'm like, nope. He goes, well, actually, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling because we were praying about this new position at our church, and your name came up. Well, honestly, you guys, I heard prayer and my name in the same sentence. I'm like, I need to check this out. And one of the things I've learned about God, and maybe this is a word to somebody here, is that sometimes the door we're focused on is not the door God is opening. But he's opening a door over here, and you're so focused here that you're not noticing that there's a door open here. And what I've seen about the way God works is that sometimes one door can lead to another door that leads to another door that actually eventually might lead to the door you want, but it's just a different route. And you have to trust God for the path. When I got this call, I wasn't looking for a job, but I'm like, gosh, if they were praying and my name came up, I went up there and I interviewed and I absolutely fell in love with this church. But I have to tell you guys a story. Right before I left, I went on a jog. I used to run all the time, and I ran it. You know how you run into the same people when you're a runner, and, and this guy who would walk his dogs, and I was like, hey, guess what? I'm moving to Santa Barbara. And he goes, oh, no. And I said, what do you mean, oh, no? Santa Barbara is beautiful. He goes, oh, no. There are no single people in Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is the home of the newlywed and nearly dead. Now you will never ever find anyone in Santa Barbara. I remember running away going, perfect, God. You're sending me to the only place where there's no single people. But I went up there to serve a church. That was the door that opened. I fell in love with the church. It wasn't what I wanted. My plan was to get married. But I was called to serve this church. And lo and behold, Three years later, I found out there was one single person in Santa Barbara. And I want to show you what God can still do, even when it seems like it's too late. Here's a picture of my wedding day. And I want you guys to hear something. Leave this up for a minute. I want you guys to hear something about that dress. First of all, you notice the butterfly in my bouquet because I so believe that God takes us through death and resurrection and death and resurrection and endings and beginnings and storms and resolve. Our God is big enough to do this. That dress was the dress I bought for fiance number one. You guys, I spent so much money on the dress. I mean, I had to keep the dress. I had the right dress. I just had the wrong guy. (laughs) So my mom thanked the Lord said, I'll keep the dress, and she did. She kept it in her walk-in closet with a humidifier on it. It was her hope chest. She used to take my niece in there and say, that's Auntie Lolo's wedding dress. (gasps) Well, my niece was my flower girl. It was such a beautiful story of what God can do. But when this happened, I was 49 years old. Now, I know, because I'm speaking to college students, that right now there are some girls going to prayer. No, God, please, no. No, no, no. I love her story. I don't want it. You know, I mean, nobody dreams of getting married at 49 years old. Let's just be honest. No, we don't. And there's a lot about our lives we don't dream. But God has dreams for us because he has bigger plans for our lives. And that's what we're going to be talking about over the next three days. You can't believe what God has done through all the things that I didn't want in my life. And that's how it's going to be for you. God is in the storm, and he's in control of the storm. And what we learn about Jesus in the boat is when the disciples wake him up, Master, aren't you going to do something? We're drowning. Jesus calmly gets up, and you can read this in Scripture, and he says, quiet. Quiet. 
be still. Boom! Storm stops. And now, all of a sudden, the disciples realize how big he is, how powerful he is. Who is this that the wind and the waves obey him? Who are we in the boat with? The disciples changed that day from following a teacher to following the Son of God because he had power over the storm. And your God has power over your storm. I don't know how long it's going to last, and I don't know what God's going to do in you and through you and because of the storm in your life, but God has a plan for storms. When I married, I was too old to have children unless... You know, God was going to pull a, a Sarah type birth, which, you know, uh, <laughs> it's a, I don't want now. It's a, I'm a, a way too old. But uh, Sarah, if you don't know, had a baby when she was 90, and you can read that story in Genesis. But so people were like, come on, Sarah, do it. I was like, no. But actually, because I waited so long, it was a package deal on my wedding day. And I have a picture of the package that came with my husband. I got two for the price of one because I had to wait so long. I married two men that day. And he had a mom, but she moved to Australia. And so I got a chance to actually raise him. He would spend summers in Australia, and I got to actually be a mom. And God had all that for me, even when I thought it was too late. Do you all know it's never too late with God? It never is. And he has power over your situation. And I can't wait to tell you over the next couple of days, you do not want to miss tomorrow's chapel because I'm going to show a video about the continuation of this story. But God has done so many things that I didn't plan. And a lot of them have happened because of things that I didn't want. We learn something new about God when we go through storms, but we have to stay in the storm with God. And I want to repeat to those of you who are in a storm right now that God is not in the storm. I think that's what we think, don't we? When things are going bad in our life, God, do you not like me? I mean, that's kind of how I felt when I went through my broken engagement. I mean, it was starting to feel like that. Am I doing something wrong? Because we feel like God is in our circumstances, but God is not in your circumstances. He's with you in your circumstances, and he will use those circumstances in your life. It might be he has a plan for you and who you're going to become because of what's happening to you, and certainly that's true. That's what happens to us when we go through storms. But God has a plan for your storm. And I want to encourage you, Southern Nazarene, to stick with God in the storm, even when you can't see him, even when it feels like he's asleep. Because one day, one day, he will show you something new about him. I want to pray right now, and uh, we're going to invite the band up. And I want to just have a time of response. We have some people that will come up and um, pray. We're going to leave a little bit of time here at the end of chapel for this. But maybe some of you are going through a storm, or you've been through a storm, or maybe you've already bailed on God because of a storm. Or maybe that's part of the reason you don't even believe in God, is because of the storms that are going on around you and in the world. But for those of you who want to take the risk to hold on, to stay in the storm with God. And you need prayer. I want to invite you during this time that this is what this week is about. It's called Spiritual Emphasis Week. And I don't know where all of you are at. I assume you're in all different places with God. But I know God sent me here. And I pray that the words that are shared in the morning will inspire you, not because they're my words, but because the Holy Spirit will take these words and will turn up the volume on the ones you need to hear. Whatever you needed to hear this morning is different from the person next to you. That's how God works. Something probably that was said stirred something in you. That's God speaking to you. But if you want to come up here, 
and you want to have some prayer before you rush off to the next thing, if you're in a storm, this space is for you. And in the meantime, the rest of us are going to worship. Let me pray. So God, I know that some of my brothers and sisters are in a storm. I remember being their age and going through my first storm. And nobody else really knew what I was going through. And maybe there's someone here where nobody else really knows what they're going through. But you do. You do and you're big enough to handle it. You are the God who is with us in the storm. And you are the God who has power over the storm, even when you're not exerting it. You have a plan for the storms in our life. And God, my prayer this morning is that we trust you and hold on. Amen.